they wrote the blueprint for the modern tank. They stocked the world's armies with their own designs. And when tactics overwhelmed their technology, they returned to the drawing board and came roaring back into battle. For a century, France has been a leader of the world's armored vanguard. the Leclerc main battle tank. One of the most destructive forces on the modern battlefield. With its awesome firepower and sophisticated weapons management systems, the Leclerc is a testament to France's legacy of armored vehicle excellence. was a technological irony. The modern machine gun and rapid fire artillery that helped create the primitive stalemate of trench warfare in World War I. To break the stalemate required yet another new weapon with three key components. Armor to protect troops from enemy fire mobility to penetrate enemy lines, and guns to overpower enemy defenses. A French artillery officer, Jean-Baptiste Estienne, became a pioneer in tank warfare. The first tanks to appear on the battlefields of Europe were British, but the French were also building their own, including the Schneider, and the much larger Saint-Chamond. Both were armed with machine guns and a 75 millimeter cannon. In April 1917, the new French tanks first entered combat at the Battle of Chemin des Dames. Slow and disorganized, they became easy targets for German artillery. The results were tragic, with nearly 150 tanks destroyed on the first day of battle. Alors le Schneider a été engagé pour la première fois euh, le 16 avril 1917 où ça a été, si vous voulez, l'apparition des, de, des, des chars français sur le champ de bataille. Euh, ça n'a pas été une réussite parce qu'il y a eu une mauvaise entente entre alliés, entre anglais et français, parce que les anglais ont engagé leurs chars de leur côté, nous euh, euh, également, et ça n'a pas été la surprise escomptée. General STN had foreseen the problem and was developing a new concept in tanks with the Renault Automobile Company. Instead of small numbers of large lumbering tanks like the Schneider, saint chamin or the British landships, he advocated large numbers of small tanks. The result was the Renault FT-17, the world's first light tank. French worked at about the same pace as the British, but they were behind in the sense of when they started. But once they got started, they initially tried some of the larger vehicles that were really designed to break through the enemy fortifications, and then moved towards some of the lighter uh, armored vehicles, particularly the FT-17, which was intended to be used to break through the enemy fortifications, but not in the same sense that the heavy tanks were to be uh, used. They emphasized a smaller tank, so it would be uh, uh, more mobile, more uh, employed more flexibly, perhaps, than what the British had envisioned in their idea. The Renault FT entered combat in 1918 and became the blueprint for the modern tank. Its greatest innovation 
a fully traversing turret. The driver sat in the front and the commander in the turret with the engine at the rear. The Renault FT became the most widely used tank of the 1920s. It formed the basis of the early tank forces of the United States, Russia, Japan and China. But for the French, the success of the FT had a downside. One of the most important factors in how they developed the tank was all of the tanks that they had left over from World War I. Specifically, they had several thousand of the FT-17s, which was a very slow vehicle, a very small vehicle, moved at about five miles an hour, uh, slightly faster than the average infantryman. Because of the existence of those vehicles, it was very difficult for the French to, to conceive of something dramatically different. So consequently, you see, in terms of concept, the existence of those several thousands of tanks was very, very important to the ultimate doctrine, uh, the ultimate equipment that they devised. Throughout the 1920s, France continued to experiment with innovative tank designs, including massive breakthrough tanks and even amphibious tanks. but it was the FT that remained the cornerstone of their force. By the 1930s, the French army realized the need for two distinct types of tanks, a small infantry tank such as the FT, and a larger, more powerful battle tank. The larger tank was meant to overwhelm enemy fortifications. Following behind, the lighter tanks moving at the speed of the infantry. With this doctrine in place, French tank designers began to build truly heavy tanks, such as the Char B series. The Char Bs had tremendous firepower and were well protected from enemy anti tank defenses. They were built to break through enemy fortifications, opening holes through which the light tanks and infantry would follow. The Char B battle tank was the most powerful tank of the 1930s. It was armed with an impressive array of weapons, a 75 mm gun located between the tracks, and a 47 mm anti-tank gun mounted in the turret. The French developed this tank for use against the German Siegfried Line. The main gun could not only destroy hardened targets, but could be used for indirect fire, since the artillery, moving at the speed of the infantry, might still be out of range. The light infantry tanks followed the same basic pattern as the Renault FT, but with thicker armor. Because so many tanks were needed to replace the old FT, different types were built. These included the Renault 35, the Hotchkiss 35 and 39, and the FCM 36. Like the old FT, they were slow infantry support tanks intended to fight enemy infantry and machine gun nests, not enemy tanks. One of the finest tanks to emerge from France in this period was the Samoa S-35 cavalry tank. In the 1930s, the French cavalry began to trade in their horses for armored mounts. The fast Samoa was well armored and well armed. It had a distinct role to play in France's preparations for war with Germany. If you look at the French war plans in the interwar period, you will find that they intended to use their cavalry uh, primarily up in the Belgian area, in the famous Jim Blue Gap. Uh, that cavalry would have to be highly mobile. It would have to have a great deal of firepower to slow down the uh, German attacks. And that's exactly what the Samuel S-35 uh, became. 
the Samoa's combination of firepower, mobility, and reliability made it the premier tank on the battlefield in 1940. But new tactics would pose the greatest threat yet to French tanks. When France and Germany went to war in 1940, the French army seemed to hold the advantage. France had more tanks and superior technology, better armor, better guns. But France was defeated in a campaign that shocked the world. The French weakness was their strategy, not their technology. The German army developed a method of mobile warfare called Blitzkrieg, which made best use of the strong points of tanks. The French doctrine called methodical battle simply couldn't keep up. The French really did not see a, a need for a great deal of training in terms of moving units rapidly from one spot to another, uh, training units to respond in, unto the unexpected. Uh, their emphasis was on the expected, to do as they were told, to respond the way the higher level commander told them to respond. The rigid and methodical battle doctrine gave the French little need for radios. Their generals felt that if their preparations focused on being prepared to move from point to point with carefully coordinated movements, they would be victorious. Fortunately, that preparation was not the preparation that they needed to respond to the very rapid, sharp, uh, decisive actions of German tanks when German tanks came into those key encounter areas. French tank design remained influential even after the defeat. The American M3 Lee tank was patterned after the Char B1. With its main gun in the hull and an anti-tank gun in the turret, the configuration of the Samoa S-35 helped inspire the M4 Sherman tank, the mainstay of the United States tank force during World War II. But France's defeat didn't mean the end of the French armored force. The young commander of the 4th Armored Division, Charles de Gaulle, re-established the Free French Forces in Britain. This new French force was equipped with American armor. The M4 Sherman tank. The M10 tank destroyer. And the M8 Greyhound scout car. The Loire Valley in the south of France is home to the prestigious Saumur Cavalry School. Since the 18th century, young Frenchmen have come here to receive specialized military training. Every summer, the parade grounds of the school, now known as the Armored Cavalry School, witness a spectacular display of French military history featuring pivotal armored vehicles from the past and present. One such vehicle, the M10 Sirocco, has a particularly proud story behind it. During the liberation of Paris, a Sirocco engaged in a duel with the formidable German Panther tank on the Place de la Concorde. In an armored version of David and Goliath, the Sirocco emerged victorious. Following the war, the French army relied on American armored vehicles until French industries could be rebuilt. During this period, the US M47 Patton was the backbone of the French tank force. In 1946, France became involved in a protracted and bloody conflict in French Indochina, where they tried to re-establish colonial rule.
The guerrilla war in Indochina was not suited to tanks. Instead, the French used tanks to patrol roads and support infantry. Probably the most famous use of tanks took place in the final months of the war, when four American-made M24 Chaffees were airlifted into the besieged garrison of Dien Bien Phu. The hopeless battle marked an end to France's role in Indochina, but not an end to French tanks. In the late 1940s, the French began to re-establish their reputation as innovators in armored vehicle design. One of the most successful designs to emerge was the Panard EBR. The EBR was designed for scouting, not fighting. It had two drivers facing opposite directions. When it located an enemy force, the controls were switched from one driver to the other, allowing the EBR to withdraw quickly and report its discovery. The wheels in the center could be lowered when traversing soft ground to give the EBR more traction. Wheeled designs became a hallmark of post-war French armored vehicle development. In 1952, France began production of another innovative armored vehicle, the AMX-13 light tank. The designers modified the powerful gun from the 45-ton German Panther tank and placed it on a much smaller 15-ton tank. To keep the tank small, the designers fitted it with an automatic loader for the gun in the rear of the turret. The AMX-13 was the first tank to use such a system, a rare attribute until recent years. France's first successful post-war battle tank was the AMX-30, which pioneered the smoothbore tank gun. Conventional tank guns are rifled, causing the projectile to spin as it's fired. The rifled bore posed a problem with new anti-tank munitions, such as shaped charge rounds. France was the first to resolve this dilemma with the smooth bore gun. Today, smooth bore guns have become standard on main battle tanks around the world. The AMX-30 still serves with the French tank force in the form of the improved AMX-30B2. The upgraded version incorporates such advanced features as a thermal imaging night sight. The thermal sight allows the gunner to spot enemy tanks even while hidden by darkness or smoke. During the 1991 Gulf War, the AMX-30 figured prominently in combat and formed the basis of many coalition tank units. During the Iraqi offensive against the Saudi town of Kafji, units from Qatar played a critical role in repulsing the enemy. After this rapid and bloody response, Iraq never again took the offensive during the war. In western Saudi Arabia, French troops of the Dagay force prepared to aid the coalition in liberating Kuwait.
Among the French armored units was the 4th Dragoon Regiment, equipped with the AMX-30 B2 tank. The French role in Desert Storm was to serve as the left flank of the multinational forces sweeping north into Iraq. Bonjour, appel, formation, mon char ici. Je veux un peloton à gauche sur deux colonnes, un, un sub devant. The French forces protected coalition units from Iraqis located farther north and west. Their other objectives to capture key Iraqi airfields and block escape routes. On the outskirts of an airbase, the 4th Regiment encountered Iraqi tanks. A short but violent battle ensued. The French mission was a complete success. But the greatest success in French tank design still lay ahead. The latest developments in tank technology are built in France's Leclerc main battle tank, which entered service in the 1990s. The Leclerc came nearly a decade after its closest counterparts, the American M1 Abrams and the German Leopard II. As a result, the Leclerc benefited from advances in communications, mobility and firepower. But the greatest improvement came from its centralized computer system for command and control of entire tank units. La capacité de, du Leclerc de s'intégrer dans un système de commandement, c'est d'abord un ensemble de communications. Le char a des capacités de communiquer de façon automatique, de transmettre et de recevoir des données numériques, de recevoir donc des ordres de bataille ou bien de transmettre des renseignements. Il est localisé en permanence et donc à partir de ces deux éléments, si vous voulez, il est possible d'organiser la manœuvre à haut niveau en exploitant au mieux les performances individuelles des chars. The Leclerc's powerful 120mm gun has a longer barrel than other tanks. The result, higher muzzle velocity and a bigger impact. The autoloader feature, pioneered by the AMX-13, can function even over rough terrain. The Leclerc also has a sophisticated computer-based fire control system and an electric turret drive. Combined with the Leclerc's thermal sight, these features provide superior results, mobile or still, day or night. The Leclerc is the latest chapter in France's innovations in tank design. From the muddy trenches of the Western Front to the rocky deserts of Western Iraq, French tanks have fought at the forefront of the armored vanguard, and there they remain.